more than 2,000 employees, round-the-clock operation, and state-of-the-art equipment. All this has been set in motion at Cumtour for the sole purpose of producing gold bars in a small, unremarkable room. Very few people have ever seen the birth of gold, but happily, we are granted such an opportunity. Hello. Come in, please. What can I do for you? I would like to see gold pouring. I've got the permission. All right. Please go to the examination area. Take all metal items out of your pockets and put them into the cell. Thank you. You are through with the examination, and now you can go on. Thank you. At last, I'm heading to my destination. I'm going to the gold room, the place where gold is melted. It's very difficult to get in here. At the entrance, you will have to undergo close examination. You are not allowed to enter the room carrying your own gold things. Photography is permitted here, at just a few places, and in no way may you show the faces of the metallurgists. During gold pouring, a number of ingredients are added to the compacted gold powder produced by electrolysis. These include saltpeter, silica, borax, and soda. All these chemicals are needed to treat gold of admixtures remaining after processing before producing gold itself. This mixture is put into a melting furnace, which is heated up to a temperature of 1,200 degrees Celsius. The metallurgists, like regular cooks, are required to be very careful because this mixture must not bubble. These cooks are wearing wearing a special fireproof outfit. At such a temperature, gold and admixtures, which are called the flux, are converted into a kind of plant oil and water. Gold behaves like water going down, while the flux, like oil, goes up. All associated metals, iron, tin, lead, antimony, that have settled with the gold on the cathode during the electrolysis are oxidized by saltpeter and turned into salts. During melting, gold is separated from the flux. Metallurgists see a clear difference between the flux and gold. This helps them remove the flux from the melting tank. The metallurgists take samples to enable the assaying lab to determine the gold content of the bars. For this purpose, they employ special vacuum flasks, which are dipped into melted gold. The lower portion of the flask being melted out, the vacuum pushes the gold up. We break the outer glass covering. By doing so, we cut off hollow parts. Finally, the time has come for the metallurgists to pour the gold alloy into special molds. After the bars have solidified, they are put onto a special table. Experts are able to determine the approximate gold content of the bars just by sight. More accurate data will be available from the assaying lab, where the samples will be sent after melting. The point is that gold produced here at Cumtor is classed as the door bars. It is not pure gold. It contains up to 80% of gold, as well as silver and copper admixtures. Sometimes they produce bars which contain more silver than gold. First, the bars are dressed and then weighed. Each bar carries a brand specifying its weight and number, after which it is removed to a closely guarded safe, inaccessible to outsiders. The production cycle is over. A few small gold bars are the result of tireless efforts made by thousands of people. It's always surprising when you see your first gold pour about how little it looks in a gold bar. With all this um, effort and mining to just get a gold bar. But that's the gold mining worldwide. And I can tell you now that all, the, all the other gold mines are the same. They always produce a small gold bar from such a large amount of tonnage and people. These eight bars were poured within three days. Their total weight is 183 kilograms, and they cost approximately 7 million US dollars. Two and a half employees and some 1,000 contractors have worked and continue to work to produce such bars.
The door bars are Comtor's final product. For gold to be transformed into pure 9,999 banking bars, it will be sent to the Cara Balta refinery for processing. But this process, as well as gold exports, is in the exclusive charge of the state-run Kyrgyz JSC. Comtor has nothing to do with the gold sales. Today, Comtor is the largest mine operating in Kyrgyzstan. Its role in the economy is so great that the GDP of this country is estimated with due regard to Comtor production. Comtor accounts for a quarter of the national output, more than a third of national exports, and remains the largest taxpayer in Kyrgyzstan. It contributes more than 100 million US dollars in taxes and other payments. The Comtor mine works like a clock for all 24 hours of the day and all 365 days of a year. This has become possible due to the reasonable distribution of resources, accurate planning, high professional qualities, and harmonious efforts of the mine employees, as well as exemplary labor, discipline, and compliance with safety rules. That's how the miners answer the challenges of high altitude. It is only in this way that they can mine ore and extract tiny gold particles at an altitude of 4,000 meters above sea level in a challenging environment such as that of the Tian Shen Mountains in Kyrgyzstan.